Good morning once again, everybody. Welcome to Fighting Illini Game Day. The Illini in St. Louis to take on uh, the Missouri Tigers in the annual Bragg and Rights battle, the 34th Bragg and Rights contest down at the Scott Trade Center. That game is one of the biggest rivalries in uh, college basketball, and you know it's one of the biggest games we look forward to playing, to go to St. Louis and play from the crowd, for it to be half orange and blue and half uh, black and gold. So, I mean, it's really fun to play in. So it's one, one of those games you really look forward to. Knowing I mean, it's going to be sold out crowd. I mean, half orange, half yellow. I mean, it just feel amazing. Yeah, we talk about that every year. The crowd is the best part about this game, and it's, it's the most fun I have every year covering a game this year. So I'm looking forward to it. Going back to my hometown, I have a lot of memories there. I've been playing basketball there since I was about three or four years old. And my dad. I coached a high school in St. Louis, and some of those old players had came to the game too. And it's just real fun playing in front of, home, in front of my hometown and in front of my friends and family. Most everybody that we've talked to uh, this week, and especially this morning, say this certainly is not one of uh, Missouri's better teams. But this is one of those kinds of games, Marcus, that uh, a lot of times that doesn't matter. It usually is a very competitive game, very few blowouts in this series. You know, you come into it feeling pretty good about things if you're on one side or the other, and. and Next thing you know, there's 30 seconds left and it's a one-point game and, and you need a shot to win it or, or go into overtime or whatever it is. Everybody's got to put 100% effort all the time and once you get that, then the other stuff can take care of itself. Making sure that you're there for one another, you're looking to your left and looking to your right, make sure you take care of each other. For the seniors, I mean, it's our last go around. Just give it all we got. Have no regrets. And good afternoon. Welcome to St. Louis, the Scott Trade Center, downtown St. Louis. It's the 34th annual Bragging Rights game, Illinois and the Missouri Tigers as we meet again before Christmas in St. Louis. The Illini come in at eight and three, the Missouri Tigers at five and five. It's a big game, it always is. And you know it's really big, because John Gross, he broke out the orange coat again. I was gonna say, if you thought I was excited two minutes ago, <laughs> seeing the orange coat, I'm really ready to go. Let's see what the jerseys look like. Here we yep. go. It's the final <laughs> Illini throwback jerseys. Look at this. <laughs> Fighting wow. Illini, they're in white. I think I'm back in 1989. <laughs> now let's play like it. And this uh, game is underway here in St. Louis. Ravante Rice into the front court, left to right, spinning drive in the lane, forced up a 15 footer, and he went in. Loose ball out near midcourt. Kendrick Nunn wins the race. Go to the basket. Oh, oh. and it flush. Kendrick Nunn. <laughs> Rebound, Ravante Rice out the head to Gill. Morgan's in the game. Hill goes by him. Couple of Tigers as well and lays it up and in. Isabel, good feet inside. Gill sees her. Put it up, missed it. Follow is good. Mike yeah. Ann. Yeah. Here's none. 4 3. Got it. Well, that took care of that. Now to Kendrick Nunn. Left wing gets it to Cosby. Cosby to Starks with eight to shoot. Starks, left wing, up for three. Got it. Big shot. With two, with one. And the Illini lead here at the half. 32-30 over the Tigers. It's a heavyweight fight. Tied at 32. 16-10 for the ball game. Here's Starks. Pull up from 15. Good. Rebound. Hill saves it. Inbounds off of Missouri. Great hustle by Malcolm Hill. Starks, top of the key, dribble drive, pull up from 10. Go! Come on, Starks has found money here at St. Louis. Dribble into the top of the key, six seconds down the lane, floater in the lane again. Little can't stop him. Illinois on the inbound out of the timeout. Rice, top of the key, all the way down the lane. They didn't stop him, and he scoops it up and in with the left hand. Biggest lead has been six. Fast break the other way. Allen underneath to Williams with a layup, and he got it. Talk about it, Brian, the next these last three or four minutes, what team imposes their will, and right now it's Missouri imposing its will on the Illini. Timeout, Illinois. Starts to Rice. Long, long three is good. 
first three of the game. On the left wing, deadlocked at 50, 6-14 left. Williams to the basket, layup, good. Starks in front of us on the left sideline. Starks top of the key, looking for an opening. Out on him, Williams, pull up from 17. It's good. Over day. Jonathan Williams. The Tigers up one, Illinois with the ball. Top of the key, Rivante backs away. Drives on Gant to the basket, layup. Good. And one. And he's fouled. Between the circles, dribbles in front of us to the left wing. Looking for an opening, down the lane, dumps it to Angle. Who slams it in? 59-57, Illinois. A minute 40 to go. And now the Tigers can either tie or win it. Illinois won by one a year ago. Gets it to Gil Caesar. Back to Clark. Looks like they're maybe going for one shot here. We'll see. Here is a drive. Nope. Clark with a pull up for the tie, and he got it. Wow. From 17, 59 59, and now Missouri calls timeout to set their defense. <laughs> the Illini with a chance to win it. Rice handling it. Six for the game. Rice with a pick from Agu. Going, going for, a win. for a win. For three. And he. Ravante Rice <laughs> with the win. Unbelievable. Ravante Rice at midcourt. They've got a pile going on with cameras everywhere. Coach uh, told me to be aggressive, and if I get a shot, take it. And I just felt like uh, dude gave me a little bit too much space, and I uh, just knocked the shot down. And there's the trophy. They've got it at midcourt. They and I have won two in a row. Unbelievable. Our goal is to have the trophy back in the locker room at the end of the game, and that son of a gun is sitting right here. Sure Great job. You guys had to make it happen. Remember I told you that, and I'm going to give it to you. And we stepped up and made some big plays. A lot of guys made big plays throughout the game. Everybody contributed to that deal. Total, total team effort. But all those times that you've been in there shooting, you've been in there shooting, and happened to be him on the one at the end of the game tonight, you were, you were prepared for that hinge moment. When that door was open and it opened, you busted right through it, and you deserve to make it. Ray, you got it. One, two, three. Oh, 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 oh. One, two, three. Finish. Yeah, when you win, it's amazing because you're the one doing the celebrating and, and you get to bring the trophy to the locker room. You get to take a picture of the trophy and you just feel so good building on the, the bus ride back campaign. It's always a good feeling when you can stay at home and not have that sour feeling of that loss. So, I mean, it's been a fun time winning and, uh, and taking the trophy home. Illinois finished off non-conference play by blowing out Kennesaw State 93-45. They then headed to Ann Arbor to begin a rugged stretch of four out of five games on the road to open Big Ten play. Ann Arbor, Michigan today for a matinee game here on this Tuesday at the Chrysler Center. Jamal Walker has the scout. That's a fun opportunity for our guys. Obviously, it's going to be a great atmosphere. And uh, to start league play, you obviously want to get off to a good start. And uh, we're, we're on the road for uh, two in a row. And uh, we're ready to decide to get it started. The Fighting Illini entered Chrysler Center looking for their fourth straight Big Ten road win, dating back to last season. For the majority of the game, it looked like they would get it. Illinois led by six at halftime and stretched the lead to 13 with 11 minutes to play. However, Michigan would hit five straight three-pointers to get back in the game and eventually outlast the Illini in overtime to spoil their Big Ten opener. Very tough loss as Illinois controlled the game really from the end of the first half, the last two, three minutes of the first half all the way into the second half. Illinois' trip to Columbus four days later would follow a similar script. The Illini used hot shooting in the first half to build an eight-point lead and went into halftime up one. And a slam dunk from Malcolm Hill and a timeout Ohio State. The Buckeyes turned up the defensive pressure in the second half, forcing several Illini turnovers that led to easy buckets. The fighting Illini left Ohio 0-2 in Big Ten play. Way, way too many turnovers, 20 turnovers. Now the Buckeyes had 18. Before their Big Ten home opener, the Fighting Illini received some bad news. Leading scorer and rebounder Rebonte Rice would be sidelined indefinitely with a broken bone in his hand. It was kind of a fluke thing, but when I saw it, I knew that this probably wasn't going to go the way that I hoped. Um, and follow-up x-rays showed that it was, and so unfortunately that was just kind of a fluke accident. There wasn't really a way to prevent that type of thing. Uh, Ray sustained an injury at the end of practice yesterday, fractured his left hand, his non-shooting hand. Ray will be out indefinitely. Uh, surgery is tomorrow.
tomorrow. We're going to get right at it. It's the best thing for Ray. We'll know more on timeline in terms of his return based on how the surgery goes uh, tomorrow. We're certainly very optimistic, but I don't want to present you or anyone with the timeline until we get through uh, the surgery tomorrow. Coach Gross is very supportive of the medical staff and has great respect for us. He understands when I say he can't go, he can't go, and, and we go from there and just move ahead and uh, next man up. Good evening once again, everybody, and welcome to Fighting Illini Game Day, the pregame show here at Courtside at the State Farm Center. It's cold and windy outside, but warming up inside, and the Illini take on now the Maryland Terrapins tonight here in the Big Ten opener. This ball game tonight, Maryland comes in at 14-1, and 2-0 and in the Big Ten. Lauren won the uh, competition during the break to go first on keys of the game. Well, every now and then you have a game where you just play out of your mind. I mean, I think two years ago when Illinois beat the number one Indiana team, you just have, you got to have one of those games that's just better than anybody thought they could play. And that, that's the only way you're going to beat this Maryland team without Ravante Rice. I'm sure that the inspiration will be a big factor, and that's what I think they got to they got to have tonight. Without their leading scorer, the Illini focused on defense in their matchup against 11th-ranked Maryland. Illinois held the Terrapins to a season-low 57 points. Agu blocks it. Leads in. Shot blocked by Agu. Left wing. Cosby up for a quick three, and he rimmed it. Rebound Agu. Put it up and in. Looks for an opening. Great pass in the hey. corner. Cosby for three, and he buried it. Left wing. Hill shoots a three. Got it. Banging bodies with Tchaikovsky. Turnaround jumper. Agu is good. Whoa. Nana with eight. The Illini opened the second half on a 20-3 run that gave them a 15-point lead. Reset with 15 to shoot. Illinois up 12 with the ball. Starts for three. Left wing and he's it. 46-31 Illinois. The crowd eating it up. Tate, top of the key. Nobody guards him. He dribbles. Now he drives to the paint layup. Good. Great play. <laughs> They just left him alone out there, and he said, okay, I'll drive to the rim with a left hand. Tate kicks to Cosby, left corner, rises for three. Missed it, rebound, Malcolm Hill, up and in. Trimble drives, layup blocked by Agwu. Tate drives, kicks to Dunn, right corner, three ball. Missed it, Mal Hill with a follow. Malcolm puts it up and in. They went eight of eight from the free throw line down the stretch to seal the win. One second left, Jalen Tate dribbles it out. And the Illini have won it. 64-57 over Maryland. Great job, you really competed your tails off, fellas. I'm proud of you, really am. I thought we played really hard, as hard as we played probably all year, throughout the 40 minutes. You know, I thought, uh, thought guys really, really, especially defensively, gave a lot more gave a lot more of themselves. And that's what it's gonna take moving forward. We just finished round three. There's 15 more rounds in season two. It was a big uh, test for us to see how tough we were uh, as a team. I mean, to find that news out, you know, a day or two before the game. And we just knew we had to step up and fill in, fill in like stats for Ray. We had to have people step up to uh, play defense, get rebounds, because I mean, he was our leading scorer and rebounder. I feel like um, people have been doing a good job of that, uh, replacing him. Illinois began another two-game road trip with a trip to Lincoln, Nebraska. The Illini struggled to hit outside shots over the Cornhuskers' pack line defense, falling 53-43. to and Illinois just no firepower in this game. When you guys looked at the uh, schedule and the way the Big Ten season started with uh, four games out of five on the road, and uh, if Illinois wins tonight, they'd come out of that with a two and three record. Would you have taken that, Marcus? Yeah, I think I said that a while back when I looked at it and said, saw four or five on the road and, and, and looked at the opponents. I thought if you came out of this two and three, that uh, you'd, you'd be all right. I think Illinois might want to try to uh, try to run a little bit and get some buckets in transition. If you're able to uh, you know, get the ball and just get down the court and start running and, and make them run up and down and guard you, and I think if you can get some easy buckets in transition, that'll loosen you up when you do get into the half court and, and, and not be so tight and be a little bit more confident when it, when it comes to that.
Out top with it, Kendrick Nunn. They sag in down low, much like Nebraska. Nunn going to try to shoot again, and he rattles in another one. Around a pick, Cosby up for three. Right wing, and he buried it. Told you, Brian. You were right on, Jerry <laughs> Hester. Rebound, Malcolm Hill. Back to Cosby for three more, and he got another <laughs> one. Look at the bench react to Aaron Cosby. <laughs> Out top, they find Demp shot blocked by Hill. Oh, great Stole play. by Tate, ahead to Hill, who slams it in. Nunn goes around his man, bounce pass, pass to Hanna, who flushes it in. Good pass. Kalen Tate, Tate going the other way, out the oh, oh, up to oh. Kendrick Nunn, and he slams it in. Up, up and away. Illinois is going to win here in Evanston. Final score, 72-67 over the Wildcats. Great team win. Got contributions from a lot of different guys. Love the process of preparing to win. Okay? Trace, you got it. One, two, three. All one, 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 four. One, one, two, three. Finish. The Fighting Illini returned to Champaign to play back-to-back -back home games for the first time in two months. The largest crowd in State Farm Center history cheered them on in their matchup against the Indiana Hoosiers. Kendrick Nunn capped a great week by scoring 24 points, and Ahmad Starks added a season-high 19. Two on three, Nunn, Starks, left wing for three, got it! But the Hoosiers closed the game on a 13-2 run and escaped Champaign with an 80-74 win. That's three guys who are expected to be in your top eight who are no longer there. It's hard for teams to adjust to that, and I think they've done a pretty good job of adjusting to it, and hopefully they'll continue to, especially against some teams coming up that have had their own struggles. During the Indiana game, Aaron Cosby took a shot to the eye and suffered a retinal tear that would sideline him for the next week, leaving the Illini extremely shorthanded for a matchup against a very physical Purdue team. Physically and mentally tough for 40 minutes, no energy vampires. We're playing every possession, hiding on every one of them, we're playing to the belt. Scored in four minutes. None. Down the lane. Layup. And they take care of that. Pull up from 15. Oh, is no good. Rebound. Hill on the follow. And that block officially makes Nana Ekwu the all-time leader. Thompson with a bad pass. Trying to hit Mathias. Stolen by Nunn. Pass it to Hill. And he slams it in. Guarded by Hill. Feeds the post. Knocked away by Morgan. Loose ball. Nunn. Oh, Left great. Ahead of Hill. Great. Two on one. To Black for the layup. It's and good. one. It's good. Oh, oh. Starks, 30 feet out. Pass to Hill. Left corner for three. And it's good. Got it. Oh. And the Illini will have the lead as we go to half. Nunn drives into the paint. Little pull up from eight. It's good. Tate out top to Hill for three. It's good. Kicks in the baseline to Hill, or to Black, Black, who buries it. Ahead to Egwu, and he slams it in. And that may do it. And the Illini have won it. Short-handed and all. Malcolm Hill with us here courtside, and uh, heard about next man up. This was kind of all hands on deck. I mean, this is one of those that, this is a perfect example of always be ready to come in the game. Well, I think we've been doing a good job of that. 66-57 Illinois over Purdue. Man, I think I need a trainer after wow. that game. That was yeah. physical. We're probably in a better position this year than we were last year, because last year, I mean, it was tough. It was a seven, eight game losing streak, and we still find, found a way to be one game away from the NCAA tournament. I mean, we got to hope we got that groove still going. Just, I just want to contribute to my team, help them any way I can. Just do what I'm in there to do, do my job, and everybody else do theirs. We're going to be good. Keep focusing and keep getting better. We'll, we'll be able to maintain our goals if we keep focusing. Next time on TNT. It's all been so, happened so quickly, I can't even imagine what it's going to feel like, but I'm definitely going to cherish it, and it'll be a, be a life-changing experience. Uh, yeah, Schmitty, I mean, he's a great player, man. I mean, uh, he played in high school, and uh, he'd be smacking him when we out here in practice. So <laughs> It's kind of funny because uh, we always know him, know him as a manager, and now that he's in the locker room, it's kind of funny. I mean, we're happy to have him on our roster.